The second form is called a joint tenant. Think of this word. We are joint. Now, we are joined. That's the way to look at it. I like drawing this one like a glass of water because in a glass of water, you cannot pull a section out without disturbing the entire process. So it's much easier to understand it like that. And in joint tenants, we actually have four things in common. And the word the book uses is unities. We have four of them. In the tenants in common, all we had was one thing in common, that was possession. In the joint tenants, we have four things that are in common. One is the possession that we just talked about. So like the tenants in common, joint tenants have the right to possess the property. The second thing that we share in common is the interest in the property. Now, we are required to have proportional shares, all right? We're required, that's a very bad drawing. So let's go back and draw my water like this. We are, we are required to have proportional shares. So if there are four of us that were named in the joint tenancy, we must in fact all have the same proportional amount. You cannot have disproportional shares. So they will say, Raymond, Bob, Bill, Sue as joint tenants. Notice in that example, I didn't tell you how much they own. They don't have to because there was Raymond, Bob, Bill, and Sue. For people, they have to have equal amounts so you know it's 25%. If they named two people, they would own 50%. If they named 10 people, they would all own 10% because you are required. <clears throat> it is still undividable. Are we okay with these two words? The word disproportional and undividable are two separate categories. Disproportional explains the amount and dividable explains what how that amount is looked at. So if we go back to the 10 marble concept, it is still undividable, meaning I cannot own, if we had four marbles, as joint tenants, I own 25% of all four marbles. The percentage is still the same. That person owns 25%. That person owns 25%. And the fourth person owns 25%. But it's of every thing. It's the interest that we're div uh, dividing, not the actual property. Because that we can't, that we have to share the joint tenants, we also have the same title work. Let me just make it a little clear. So now, in the tenants in common, we had a one title work for every owner. Now we have one title work that names all of the owners at one time. And the example I just gave you, it would say, Bob, Bill, Mary, Sue, as joint tenants to the property located at 12 Smith Street. It named all four owners on one title work. Okay. When 
joint tenancy is conferred, it is typically through an operation of law and we all four of us get the property at the same time. Like a reading of a will. Grandfather leaves the farm to his four grandsons as joint tenants. He would name them Billy Joe Bob, Bobby Joe Bob, Jimmy Joe Bob, and Johnny Joe Bob as joint tenants. They got it all at the same time through the reading, reading of the will. All four are named on one title policy. Because there are four of them and he called out joint tenants, you know that each one of them owns 25% and they all have the right to possess or have the tenement of the property. So you will notice that in joint tenants, we have four unities, possession, interest, time, and title. Now I found something out cool that I could do. In a tick, remember we drew it like a pie. And we had A, B, C, and D. The only unity they had over here was possession. All right. My writing's getting worse. So those are the two concurrent methods, tenants in common or joint tenants. Now, joint tenants actually have another specialty that I want to look at. And a lot of times you will see JTWRS, meaning it's joint tenants with right of survivorship. And here's how the right of survivorship goes. When one of the members die, their portion gets divvied up amongst the remaining owners. It's supposed to be a D. In a joint tenant, it is not treated like regular real estate. One of the four brothers cannot sell his portion. He can't give it away. When he dies, it does not go in his will. When one of them dies, his portion gets divided amongst the surviving members of the joint tenants. So in the example I just showed you, they were 25%. Now one of the brothers has passed away, so his portion gets divided amongst the others. Now they each own 33 and a third percent. Then one of them die. And what you're left with, his portion would get divided among the surviving members. So now the two own 50%. And then in theory, the third brother passes away. Oops. And D wins the game, so to speak. D now owns 100% of the property. And D owns it how? The answer would be in severalty. He won the game. He is the surviving four, the surviving brother of the four. So he is the sole owner now. He owns it in severalty. Now it gets treated like that. So in essence, when he dies, he now wills it to his four grandkids and the farm stays on down into the family throughout history. So what you have are the two concurrent types of ownerships. 
we have the tenant in common that only has possession. And then we have a joint tenant that has four of them. All right. Are we cool? Thumbs up. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about the joint tenants. And I'm going to redraw the joint tenants. But I can do this. I'm going to redraw the joint tenants like a pie, just so it's easier to understand. So there's the four grandkids. They received it as a joint tenant with right of survivorship. Sometimes you will see this. You don't necessarily need to see this because by definition, <coughs> joint tenant means right of survivorship, okay? So sometimes you'll just see joint tenants. That's what it means. And the, the next topic I wanna cover is one of these topics that probably wouldn't happen in the real world, but I have to use this example so that I can explain the concept to you, all right? So let's go through the example we're talking about. Four brothers inherit the farm as joint tenants. And I told you, based on the concept of being joint tenants, they own 25%, and they must give up the, their portion to the surviving members when they die. There is a very special court case where one of the brothers could actually go through a court process called partitioning. And you know, you know what the word partitioning means is I'm gonna partition off, they talk about it in a hard drive. That means set aside or seclude. So what one of the brothers wants to do is like, hey, look dudes, I don't like you guys. I don't wanna be part of this. I want to sell my 25% to the open public. Well, joint tenants say he can't do that. So he would have to go to a lawsuit called partitioning. And what the judge could do is partition out his interest. So he could, in fact, sell it to his other cousin that wants to be involved in the farm, okay? So the new cousin comes in and he automatically bought the interest of D. So he bought D's 25% interest. But what you still have is A, B, and C are still joint tenants and they still operate like a joint tenant group. So when one of them dies, his portion gets split amongst the remaining members. How much portion is split? It's only 75%, right? Because D sold his partition section out to E, and that 25% is not involved in the joint tenant group. So when the one brother A, in my example, dies, his portion gets divided amongst the other joint tenants. E is not a joint tenant, so he doesn't get it. So what you get now is B owns 37.5%, C owns 37.5%, that is 75%, while E is the other 25. Notice E did not increase his percentage because he is not part of the original joint tenant group that is there. And then one more die. So his portion goes away. It goes to the surviving member. So now C is the surviving member. He owns 75%. 
And my question to you is what does this on the screen look like to you? And I've had a lot of people say, it looks like Pac-Man. That's not what I'm talking about. Notice this, what does it look like? Look here. Because all these have now in common our possession. They no longer have proportional shares. They no longer have one title work because when E came in, he got title work and they no longer have the same time because E came in after D. So therefore all they have in common is possession so what I'm telling you is this. All right, maybe. A, B, and C are operate as joint tenants. I want that one. So A, B, and C are still joint tenants. But together as a group, the three of them are a tenant in common with the letter E. So there's no way for E to join the, te the joint tenancy, like there's no like court way to, for D to just transfer his rights to E and him be a part of that joint tenancy. In joint tenancy, there are four unities. All four must be in place. E came in after D, right? A, B, C, and D got it on January at the reading of the will. D goes through partition, sells it to E in February. So by definition of chronological time, E can't come in the same time as the other three. He can never be in that joint tenant, all right? Simply because of the time aspect. And the other is, he bought D's proportion at 25% when there were four of them. When there's now three of them, his port, because he's not part of that joint tenant, he doesn't benefit from the splitting of A's property. If you think back how I did it, only C and B get part of A's because the new E is not a joint tenant. 